Hi, my name is Kobi Georg and I'm one of the co-founders of Kobi ID. Kobi ID is an app that allows users to securely store and verify their COVID-19 status. The problem that we are facing as we go through this crisis is that there are three phases of COVID-19. And our idea is to use blockchain and self-sovereign identity to help with all three phases. In the first phase, we have a few isolated cases. So there's an initial outbreak. Um, we have sort of individual cases that are isolated. And this is the most important phase because during this phase, we can still stop the spread of the virus without a, nat a national lockdown. Then following this phase, when the virus spread cannot be contained anymore, we have the hammer. During this phase, there's a critical mass of people that have been infected. The virus can no longer be contained and it spreads through the entire population. Once we, we have that phase, and that's the phase we are currently in, nothing but a nationwide lockdown helps to, spread, uh, to curb the spread of the virus. However, once the, the lockdown ends, we enter the third phase, which is called the dance. During the dance, we see uh, outbreaks of the virus uh, spreading again throughout the country and we need to be able to contain each new outbreak of the virus. So there are several things that you can do in order to help during each phase of the outbreak. So in the first phase what we can do is we can use track and trace in order to test so if, uh, and, and trace where a user who has tested positive for COVID-19 has been, who he has been in contact with, and there are several approaches to this. So once a patient shows symptoms, she gets tested. If she is tested positive for COVID-19, it's crucial to track down all the contacts she has been in, in, uh, in contact with over the past two weeks and tell these people to self-isolate and get tested. As long as we only have a few outbreaks that are distant and not connected to one another, uh, this track and trace approach can help a lot in containing the spread of the virus. Now, if that, if that isn't possible anymore, and we have to use the hammer, a nationwide lockdown, only this sort of very invasive um, policy will help to actually curb the spread of the virus. Uh, and it's a known phenomenon in epidemiological models that if you have reached a critical threshold of connectivity and sort of spread of the virus, you need to actually uh, engage into this full lockdown in order to contain it. Afterwards, however, we will see uh, several reoccurrences of the virus. It is likely that the virus is going to mutate. In fact, it already has mutated. Luckily, so far, all the mutations have been more benign. However, even without mutations, the exact same um, virus strain will still spread through the population unless we have a vaccine available at scale. And this, at the best estimate, is 6 to 12 months out. So during that time, after the lockdown, but before we have a vaccine, what we need is an application that allows users who already had the virus or who have recently been tested to verify their status as they enter public spaces. This app is going to be a feature of everyday life. Think about uh, going to an airport, an area where there's sort of a lot of people and um, high transmissibility of the virus. Uh, it would be much safer if you can prove that you have recently been tested and that you haven't had the virus um, for you and your fellow travelers. So what is Covi ID? Covi ID is an application that uses a secure decentralized data store to allow users to verify, verify their COVID status. A user can install the app on her phone and can go to a doctor, get tested. If the test is positive and the user has corona, then the doctor issues a credential saying, okay, at this point in time, I have tested uh, the user. She has contracted the virus. Um, I've admitted her to self-isolation or she has been admitted to a hospital in a, in a severe case. So this information is stored on the user's phone. It will never leave the phone and when the user has recovered she can go to a supermarket, an airport or back to university and prove that she already had the virus so that she is no longer susceptible to it, she can no longer transmit it to others and um, in that state she should be able to fully return uh, to the normal life and, and back into the economy. So the issue that uh, such a track and trace system, which has been deployed around the world, has if it's not done in a decentralized way, is that as soon as the government starts collecting everybody's geolocation data, where everybody was, um, whether or not they had the virus, this becomes a target for hackers. It is an incredibly attractive 
a very valuable data set uh, that will attract great scrutiny from, uh, from hackers around the world um, and will act as a giant honeypot to which they are drawn. In a decentralized uh, application, you don't have that issue. You don't have that cyber security risk. And what is more, you can protect users' privacy. You can make sure that users don't have an incentive to try to evade um, the geolocation and the contact tracing. Uh, because if they start evading these measures, the whole purpose would be defeated and we wouldn't be able to efficiently track and trace and therefore we would be much more likely to enter uh, another phase of a national shutdown. So what we do is we use a self-sovereign identity application that interacts with an open uh, standard um, on a decentralized network using the sovereign, um, the sovereign network which is governed by an independent body to ensure that the, the standard that we are using is interoperable so that other users can build on the, same, on the same network. And the app allows users to collect the information about their status and about all the contacts they had through Bluetooth contact tracing, just as it is done in Singapore, and through tracking of, sort of where a user has shown her verification status. This will provide an unparalleled picture uh, where users have been um, and allow track and trace in a much better granularity that any pure geolocation data could. In addition, the preserving of, of privacy is, in our opinion, a fundamental key feature that only blockchain technology can give us because only through the use of blockchain and the self-sovereign identity app we can ensure that users' privacy isn't compromised by still delivering the exact same functionality that a centralized system uh, a centralized system would have. We have also thought about users who don't have cell phones, which is a large part of the particularly vulnerable population in South Africa. These users can go to one of our corporate partners, for example Standard Bank, um, and get what is called a custodial wallet. So they can go to the bank, they can have their picture taken, um, that is added to a wallet, a SSI wallet, which is hosted at Standard Bank. Uh, Standard Bank will then print a laminated version of the QR code that the user can take home or it can be printed on a small ID card uh, and whenever the user has to has to provide her status she just shows this QR code that can be scanned from a piece of paper without any phone if necessary and will enable her to to prove her COVID status even if she doesn't have a phone. There's no other technology out there at the moment that allows the track and tracing and the verification of contacts for users without a phone. Only Kobe ID will, will give you this functionality. Now, using this uh, decentralized data store enables us to eliminate cybersecurity risks that exist in any centralized system. Because data is not stored in a single place where it can be accessed by a hacker, but rather distributed over a network where every user only has the data she needs, we reduce the cybersecurity risk we enhance privacy and we greatly improve the efficiency of the track and trace system. Because if you collect everybody's data in a centralized database and you have a single case where somebody has COVID-19, uh, you need to go through the entire rest of the database to find all possible matches. This is computationally extremely expensive, especially for a system deployed at scale. What our solution offers instead is that because we collect only actual contacts, but not so of continuous geolocation tracking. Uh, our system offers the ability to th simply go through this list of contacts if somebody has been pe tested positive for corona and then inform each and every possible contact in a much better uh, way than a centralized system could, much more efficient. With COVID-ID it's therefore possible uh, to ensure users' privacy, to provide the track and trace functionality that is key during the first and the third stage of the coronavirus spread um, and by doing all this using the latest possible technology which is blockchain and self-sovereign identity use the latest insights from academic research about how we can most efficiently fight the spread of this virus um, and build an infrastructure that allows us to leapfrog existing te technology and make sure that we are ready for the fourth industrial revolution.